Hey everybody, I've got a song here um, that I'm working on, and it's pretty standard pop country. Uh, I want to talk about approaching the chorus because this song is 1164 in the chorus, which is our um, Nashville way of saying two bars of one chord, one bar of six minor, one bar of four. We're in the key of A, so it's A for two bars, F sharp minor for a bar, and then D for a bar. It would be kind of boring if that's all I did in the chorus was just One of the hardest things for me is to figure out if the producer and engineer wants that or not. I kind of feel like we've moved past it, but for certain songs and for certain um, producers and engineers, they want the thickness of a stereo pair of guitars doing that in the chorus all the time. I just don't hear that too often on the radio, it seems, unless you're dealing with like a a song that leans a little more rock, you know, something from Jason Aldean or or somebody like that. There's there's low beefy guitars, you know, that are that are stereoed out and panned and and you know, it makes it makes sense in certain contexts. I just don't hear it a lot on like pop songs. Pop songs, it's like how few tracks can we have um and get away with all the energy and all the scene changes and lifts and interest that we need. And this song is pretty pop, right? Um, like I said, the one I'm working on now. And I think it would be a disservice if I were to just play low chords, you know. I might do a track of, of that or two just because the engineer might want it, might want to put it, you know, back in the mix, just sort of panned out and there for for weight in the mix. But I need to do something that's interesting and that, gives energy to the chorus and provides a lift. So a lot of times I'll do some sort of cleaner, funky part that kind of dances around the vocal. Um, sometimes it's a single note thing, sometimes it's two notes. I was listening to this chorus and I was hearing a, a two note thing. I haven't laid any tracks on this song yet, but I have listened through it and I've got a chart. So check this out. Here's the chorus and the vocals are way back, but they're just there to kind of guide me. So. Here we go. Here's your F sharp minor. Here's your D chord. Back to the A. So that's the chorus and you know I might I might go ahead and just put those guitars on there um, it didn't sound it didn't sound bad I just would never want to leave it with just those kinds of parts just big diamonds you know so I'll probably do a, a stereo pass of those but I'm hearing a part I want to try first so let's uh let me I've got to set this session up a little bit. I was sent the whole session, which is nice. I can just open it and start working. But I do want the pre-roll that I'm used to having. This song is at 82. I think a bar of pre-roll is, is fine. So I'm going to give myself a bar of pre-roll and play this chorus part. This is going to be a cleaner, funky thing. that a lot so um the great thing about being sent a session to is uh often all the markers are dropped so i know exactly where the chorus is i don't have to judge by the shape and size of the waveforms um so i'm gonna go to the second chorus 
and do the same thing. And uh, the second chorus, you'll, you'll you notice there was a stop at the end of that first chorus. Second chorus plays through, and then it goes to a solo. So um, I'll probably continue playing all the way up to the bridge, uh, where we have a, a couple diamonds, and then there's a down chorus. So I might just roll the rest of the way out from, from here on out and finish this part out. spot where I messed up my pattern on the one chords. I think it's in the second uh, second half of the chorus, bars five and six. I'm going to listen real quick. <laughs> nicely okay and where I stopped was the down chorus and I don't want to put this in the down chorus it's supposed to air out but we are back up in four bars so I'm gonna play this part the rest of the way out Ooh, maybe I jump on that build how about that tightly as I wanted to. It kind of snuck up on me, so I'm going to grab that spot one more time. All right, and our, our intro's down, which makes sense. There's a stop. You wouldn't stop there if you were going to stay up at chorus level for the outro. So um, they put a stop there. The outro is back down to our, our intro vibe, and we don't need this part in the outro. So I'm just going to highlight and delete it. So I've got one part down and um, let's see, I think I want to, I think I want to go ahead and put a couple of big guitars on the chorus. I think I'll just stay on the old jazz master. <laughs> Pan these where I want them. I'm going to do um, double each chorus before I move to the next one. So, do I want a little gain? Right now, this is just the amp. Uh, it's my trusty old analog outfitters, Sarge. I have everything off on my pedal board. Um, if I turn on the old Nobles. like that voicing where it's basically an A sus2 but you can use it over the 6 chord you just do A sus2 over F sharp but sometimes having the 2 which is the 4 of the F sharp rubs with the melody um, I have a feeling that might happen here so what I want to do is 
is maybe not have that two ringing out. Here I'm, I'm muting it. Just ones and fives. It's the most rock and roll A chord out there. No thirds. And uh, I'll probably play an actual minor chord. And then I'm happy to do the, the sus2 on the D chord. Because uh, that's just the five of the scale. And that's not going to rub against anything. You can always have the five ringing out on pretty much every chord, it seems like. All right, let's do a couple passes. Right now, those are sort of overpowering everything else, but again, it's not going to sound like that in the final mix. They're going to be they're going to be tucked way back because this is not a Jason Aldean type track. So, um, I'm halfway putting these in here just so uh, the producer doesn't come back and say, uh, "Could you add those stereo guitars?" If he doesn't want them, he can mute them. But I'm I'm anticipating the possibility that he may want them. And that's why I'm adding them. So let's go to the next chorus. And this stays up through the solo. So I'll definitely play through there. I might I might lighten way up in the right hand and play, play the bridge diamonds as well. I don't want to be real big on, in that spot. So here we go. <laughs> the same way on both of those guitars out of the bridge. That's cool. Okay, um, and we're back in. Uh, I'm going to build in bar four on both of these guitars since, since that's what the drums are doing. a 
short outro that's down. These guitars don't need to be there. Double. So I've got three chorus parts. I'm gonna bring these way down. Probably drop them like 10 dB. I don't need them to overpower everything else. And uh, that, that funky part is pretty loud. As far as the mix is concerned, I'll drop it 4 dB or so. <laughs> Those guitars might even be pulled back even even more when the mix is all said and done. Um, in Nashville, it seems like there's the vocal, and then there's like the snare drum, and the rest of the drums, and the bass, and then everything else is way down here. Keys, guitars, acoustic instruments. Um, everything really is to support the vocal. So uh, you, you hear it in the way songs are mixed. Our intro is not up, right? Let me check. Yeah, so these these tracks, all three of the tracks I've played are exactly where they will live. So I don't need to worry about um, missing any other big sections of the song. I'm just gonna do one more crossfade here on that funky part, my entrance. I always make sure my stuff is really nice and clean. I don't want anybody to have to edit or to guess where my my edit was supposed to be um, whenever I punch a, a small spot or whatever. In this funky part, it's actually pretty easy. There's so many there's so many holes in between what I'm playing. I can just drag to right, right in between two different spots because it was so percussive. So uh, let's see, let's see what else we can add here. Um, I want to hear just the track. So there's a there's a demo. Um, what I'm playing to, I'm playing to a demo that has the vocal way out front, and it's EQ'd so that you basically hear the vocal. Like here, here's just the, just the demo. Producer, the producer put a couple plugins on it to almost completely isolate the vocal. None of that stuff is going to be living in this uh, track that we're doing. This is for somebody's record, not not just a demo. Here's what the track is, um, minus my parts. <laughs> Acoustic, bass, and drums. stuff to the chorus I, I don't know but what I really want to do is figure out what's going on in the intro there's a very specific acoustic part Acoustics got this, it's just rolling through the first four notes of an open A chord. And then he goes to the D, and that's again the sus2 shape. Um, but in bar two, 
of the verse. There's some there's some lick that I want to hear again. So he does something a little fancier. I don't think I need to double that. I just want to be aware of what it is um, because that needs to inform my part. So let, let's see, can I come up with on the intro that is kind of cool and hooky? Helps if I record enable a track. So you hear that steel, that's in the demo. Um, that's not going to be living in the track that uh, that we're making here. So that makes me think that I should come up with a part and then have another part that answers it. it was at 81. I might be a little too Lanois for this track. something out here maybe to answer with like that. Let's try it again. Ooh, it's fast moving. What if I don't strike all the notes?
same track as my big rhythm guitar so I need to create some more tracks here the nice thing about working from home is that I don't get two passes top to bottom of a song and then fix those up um, and move on I mean, even on some master sessions, we're doing three songs a session. So you've got time to really hone in your parts, but this is just different. Um, I kind of prefer working like this from home when when the song is already laid out. Um, it's been programmed. There's, there's loops. There's... Uh, like this already has drums, bass, and acoustic. If I were doing this on a session, I would take one pass that had one intro hook, went to the big chords on the chorus, and uh, then my other pass would have the answer in the intro, double the big chords in the chorus, if we felt that's what the song needed. And actually the nice thing about being on a session is that you can ask, <laughs> hey, do, are you wanting stereo heavy guitars? stereo heavies on this song um and depending on how fast our pace is i might play the solo on the way by on one of them i really like the energy that gives or you know if it's a record come back do that on a separate track it's always nice for the engineer to have uh solos and like verse two fills or whatever on a separate track because they will will mix that in a completely different way than everything else Okay, so I have I have tracks open now and I will add add this uh intro answer. I think that's too long of a verb. That's the cathedral setting on my Maris Mercury 7. There's the plate. So with none of the knobs being moved, you just switch from plate to cathedral with this little button. And uh I don't have any shoes or socks on so I can actually touch it. Actually 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 push the button with my toe but um it's a drastically different decay and, and length of reverb even with the same settings all right here come let me make sure i don't have any other tracks record enabled when you're scrolling through a screen sometimes you leave something opened and you record completely over another track very frustrating <laughs> Okay, so let's go back to our first intro part for the turn. Um, so I will switch back to that track. So we have two things happening for our intro and our turnaround, and they're the same length. They're just two bars of one of the A chord. <laughs> that 
with the slide. slide off but I feel like maybe putting something in the down chorus would be cool ah, chorus changes so again a uh, third chord is a six minor and then we build in bar four that too late because I don't have my other intro part in that outro so and I played through the last chorus the up part on the bridge pickup I feel like this song's gonna want slide all the way through so uh, let's let's one thing at a time um, so here comes the uh, outro hook So a common thing in Nashville uh, is that you get um, an intro and a turn that are very short, and then you get an outro that's longer, and the chords change in the outro. So you have to decide if your part is going to work as is, just repeating it over the different chords, which sometimes is really cool, or do you need to tweak one part of it? I decided on the fly to tweak one part of it. So over the one chord, I was going, that's A, E, one to five. And then I hit the uh, lower five and do the um, sus release on the three to four. But in the back half of the outro, there's a four chord. I saw that coming up and I thought, well, it might be cool instead of doing this to go, just to catch the six, because that's the third of the four chord. But still keep the same back part of the phrase. I think it's cool. So uh, let's jump back to our slide, because this is going to be different than what I play in the choruses. And I think I'm gonna leave the delay off. Neck pickup, same settings otherwise. I've been using the one guitar this whole time. It's kind of what I love about this guitar. It works for lots of different things. It's a very special one. And actually I get a lot of compliments from other session guys or a lot of comments on the guitar in particular. Like every single time I dial up a tone or a part that perks other players ears up, they say they look over and they see this guitar. It's always that guitar. And we've been talking about how a lot of the, 
a lot of the players have a guitar that for whatever reason just sounds head head and shoulders above all their other guitars in their hands you know um i'm trying to think of uh there was a hand there was there was a bunch of us talking about this and a couple of guys were saying for me it's this guitar every time i play something that they're like what is that it's always this guitar when they end up looking over or actually looking up and seeing what i'm playing um for for my buddy Rob, I think it's his old Telly. But man, he's got so many amazing old guitars. For Tom, it's his 335. Uh, for Derek, it's usually his 335. It's a very special sounding guitar. Um, let me think. Some of the other guys. For the late JT Cornflos, it was always his blue Telly. I mean... That thing was just magic in his hands. <laughs> it was so, so good sounding. I mean, just on tracking day in the control room, it was like, that sounds like however many records we've all heard and love, you know. Um, think of some of the other guys. Uh, I think Troy, Troy Lancaster has a telly that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know who else I, um, Adam Schoenfeld with him, he's got a, an old melody maker that's kind of been converted into a Les Paul Jr. That seems to be his number one guitar. And every time he plays it, it's like, okay, that's Adam, you know, uh, <clears throat> anyway, for most of us, there seems to be one guitar that our hands and our style and the parts we go for just seems to work with. And everybody thinks that's this guitar for me. And I definitely feel the most comfortable on it and I feel like I can do the most with it. So I guess I agree. So uh, let's go back and fill in slide stuff on the choruses. And then I probably need to play a solo and some verse two fills and send it off and see what they say. So uh, I think I'm going to do the chorus slide stuff. Don't want to do it on a different track. I jumped to it already on the last track. Oh, I don't think I am. I think I'll stick on the same track. I did have some delay on it. Pretty loud. Maybe I'll dial the mix back some. had my acoustic mic on under the desk it popped kind of loud when I hit it with my headstock. Okay, let's see how this works on the, the chorus. Bridge pickup. four I feel like I'm what I'm playing is too straight for the for that phrase that I have in the, the sort of funkier guitar Little bit 
better. Okay, next chorus. Well, first, again, I don't want to have to go back and wonder if I caught all these crossfades, so, gosh, I probably didn't even have to touch most of these. That's the nice thing about having decent pocket, is that when you punch, um, you don't really have to do much, if anything at all, in some cases. If you're playing the same way you did before going into a punch, there's not going to be that big pop of a waveform going from one spot straight to another spot or something like that. So it pays, it pays to work on your rhythm and your timing. Course two. All right, that's where we are. Back to the bridge. Little delays back on. So um, I'm just stopping because of pitch stuff. I definitely want to follow that program. I want to go low during the solo. I don't want to play a slide solo because we've had slide the entire song. And uh, let's do something different at that point. So I'm going to punch back in in the exact same spot. And since, since I kind of stumbled into this chorus slide part, um, just rolling through the third chorus, I want to make sure it measures up to what I kind of honed in on and settled on for um, the first two choruses. So let's just listen. <laughs> It's definitely cool, but I'm, I want to hear that line uh, that I've heard the past two choruses in that spot. So I'll jump back in. Outro. 
So I moved, um, I moved my first hook around a little bit, but this one works fine over the four chord exactly the same. I'm gonna replay that first hook just because I ended up landing in a weird spot with this guy. That would be why. That's the one thing that is mildly annoying about this guitar is just the nature of the beast, having a vibrato and a bunch of string behind the, the saddles and um, the tension and everything. Like this, this guitar likes to go out of tune on me. So one more time. <laughs> let things ring for two or three bars let them decide how they want to fade it how, how long they want it to last so uh let's do a solo you grab a telly we are in nashville after all I don't even know what I'm tuned to on this guy. Down a half step. All right. kind of an easy you know easy going vibe about this song and I don't want to get all shreddy with it I didn't mind that solo I just playlisted keep it play another <laughs> that after a couple minutes of tuning a guitar a half step in any direction like I went I was at an E flat standard I just tuned up to standard play a couple minutes and it's gonna need to be adjusted <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Let's see if that's too much. at the end. Let's scope the solo. I think I think I'm good on it. But. Cool. I'm good with that. Verse two. Lyrics doing more than I thought it would was. making weird moaning noises no, no. Um, anyway I think we're good um, solo verse 2 stereo chorus guitars funky chorus part slide throughout two parts of a hook in our intro turn and outro um, I don't think it needs more information from my world I think I'm good see you later <laughs>